Hello and welcome to this Google Patent Analysis video. This will be the second video in the Google Patent series and I will also include it in the playlist for our topical map uh, SEO course which we have here on YouTube and I will link both of those playlists below in this video later on. Cool, the Google Patent that we are looking at today is computerized systems and methods for extracting and storing information regarding entities. So these patent titles tend to have the issue that the important stuff is at the very end, right? It's inf the entities that we're really in interested in here. So if you're ever doing a Google patent search, um, look for those words like entities and then author Google, and you might find some interesting patents there. Instead of reading through the probably five to 6,000 words, we will start with images because that's going to be a bit more fun. So let's have a look here at the images related to this patent. Um, starting here with the first image, we can see that the interesting part here really is at the bottom. There's an entity database and there's a context database. And we have examples for both of them prepared for you. So you can see here um, in the entity database, let me make this bigger. We might have things like um, an entity class, such as a person. Um, then the person's name is George Washington. The attributes of him are his birth date. Then you have the actual birth date here and you have his role as the first US president. And you have an entity, Michael Jordan, um, again, attribute profession, value basketball player. So it's this entity attribute value model, EAV, uh, that is reflected inside of this database. Here are a few more examples. I will pause here if you want to check out this example. And we then also have the context database, which contains the context of the relationship of things. So it says basically that a class of person is related to the context of is married to. And so you have the example here, Barack Obama is married to Michelle Obama. And similarly for uh, located in, uh, the Eiffel Tower is located in Paris. Again, creating a relationship between the two entities here, Eiffel Tower and Paris. Cool, that's how this patent gets started. Uh, let's check out the next steps here of what's actually inside of the uh, database. So here in this figure 2A, we can see that uh, we have one of, we have our main entity here, uh, Bryce Harper in this case. I don't know the guy, but I expect that he's a professional basketball player because here this 0.999 indicates a very high confidence score that this entity, Bryce Harper, um, has a relationship being, profession, has profession is the attribute. And then the uh, value is here, a basketball, a baseball player. Uh, so Google has a high confidence essentially that this guy is indeed a baseball player. Um, then we can also see that the super class of person has been assigned to him and professional basketball baseball player is a subclass of person. So we can see that Google understands quite a bit through this entity attribute value model by having the entity stored on the one hand and then on the other hand having the context which is where uh, this part here on the right hand side would come from the subclass and the person would come from um, the uh, model that actually stores the context. Then you also have things like the birth date, slightly lower confidence score on that. And um, there are other things like home runs. This, If this guy would be still playing actively, um, then this home runs would be constantly updated. That's the other part of this patent that Google recognizes that entities are not static things that you collect information one time. It needs to be constantly updated because if the guy still plays, he might get more home runs. So this number 60 here changes to an 80, for example. 
So in a way, that's one way how you can think about fresh content. What has happened in your industry where you can update the values for entities. You don't need to find new entities or attributes for entities. You might be simply able to teach Google that there are new values for certain entities and doing that in a way that is uh, cheaper than your competitors, clearer to understand for search engines. So another interesting part here in the entity database are the association scores, which reflects the likelihood or degree of confidence that an attribute and its value is legitimate or correct. So what that means is that you can actually pollute your entity by teaching Google so many conflicting things that the confidence scores would be very low. That Google, if you on the one hand say that your um, carpet cleaning service costs $199, the value. On the other hand, you say that it costs $150. In other cases, you say that um, it's charged in Australian dollars and somewhere else you have British pounds um, and you're not clear about that. Then Google can get very confused about the association scores. And going back to our graph here, um, it is this score that's actually pointing towards the entity's value that would be quite low then and Google wouldn't quite know what the price is that you charge or perhaps your location if you've moved locations and on your website it still has the old location and on some business directory listings it has the new location again you're affecting this score here the confidence score that this is the correct value so this is part of the concept of entity pollution and it can definitely have a negative effect uh, on your overall um, entity and rankings as a business because again Google is not quite sure on the values that are associated to it. And in the bigger sense here why this matters for our course in the next video we will have a look at how we can actually get these uh, important attributes and values uh, for the topic that uh, we are doing of family law in order to then um, structure what will be in the page titles because that should be indicative of what's going to be inside of the content. Um, the entities that we're discussing in the content and the attributes, um, some of them if they are core attributes then they should also be in the page title. So that's why it makes sense to do this kind of planning beforehand instead of just doing keyword research, writing out all your page titles and then seeing that you are not actually discussing the important parts of the entity attributes and values. And we're also going to look at grabbing uh, entities, the attributes and values from competitors to see what they are talking about in order for us to then um, create a more in-depth and also a more up-to-date strategy. So up-to-date could mean here the home runs, um, that would be a value that changes. So we will look at identifying um, attributes that have values which constantly change so uh, which gives us a chance to provide more recent information to the search engine. All right I hope this video was helpful you can read the patent yourself I will link to it in the uh, description below as well and I will see you in the next one.